What if you could combine two of the most powerful legendaries on your Feral Druid in Shadowlands? It sounds too good to be true, right? Well, in Dragonflight, you can do exactly that. This is one of the reasons why Feral is looking outstanding heading into this expansion. After having talks with our experts, we're going to preview Feral Druid in Dragonflight PvP. But before we dive in, make sure to subscribe if you want to stay ahead of the meta. We're going to be covering all Dragonflight and Wrath Classic until launch, so hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications for instant access to PvP news. Our first impression of the spec is that it seems to be looking like a similar playstyle to the current Necrolord build. The main difference is that you may not be dealing as much multi-target damage as you think, mostly dealing single target pressure. This doesn't sound too great, but dealing more single target damage may open up more comp options. Outside of that, there are a lot of similarities with Feral Druid moving into the new expansion. Most abilities remain around the same, with a few changes that are favoring certain builds. There are also a few annoying changes with the talents, having difficult choices to make, as well as being forced into picking a few trash talents just so you're able to get the good ones. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what the standard Feral Tree should look like. This is what your main tree will look like, picking up quite a few exciting talents for Feral Druid. You'll want to be working your way to pick up Feral Frenzy and Adaptive Swarm being essential spells to increase your pressure. The main strength to come from the new talents is gaining Drought and Circle from the Feral Tree. This essentially gives you an incredible amount of extra pressure, mainly in the form of single target. While Ferals can be happy with the single target burst build, it also limits their playstyle. Having Circle makes it difficult to cleave often due to your bleeds ticking rapidly. The only situational choice here will be Savage Roar, which you could put into Berserk Relentless instead. This mainly comes down to your own personal preference. Another build you may want to utilize is the Convoke build, which adopts the Night Fae Covenant from Shadowlands. While it allows you to pick up Convoke, this build has fallen off for a couple of reasons. A big strength of Convoke was the fact that it became a 1 minute cooldown with its legendary. Now that it will always be a 2 minute cooldown, it makes it much easier to deal with, considering players can just match their trinket to deny its cast. Another reason Convoke will fall off is the fact that there were a bunch of modifiers for increasing its damage, such as Conflux of Elements. Losing out on these damage modifiers will mean Convoke will be less impactful than it used to be. Moving on to your normal talents, there are basically two different builds that you can go for, which only having five talents changed. The main build consists of picking up normal talents that you should be no stranger to. These include talents such as Maim, Wild Charge, Remove Corruption, Skull Bash, and Stampeding Roar. Then the first build puts the remaining points as shown, mainly to pick up Cyclone. Cyclone, as we know, is a powerful ability that can be great for peeling enemy players or to create CC chains on healers in order to land kills. As powerful as it can be, it may not be needed in all situations, especially when playing highly aggressive comps where raw damage is a priority. This is where your second build can step in, swapping these five talents in order to pick up Renewal and Heart of the Wild. Renewal is an excellent defensive cooldown that will bolster a Feral's defensives. Being able to use it while in bear form will increase its healing done and will be a nice way to deal with heavy burst damage. Heart of the Wild is also an excellent cooldown to have, being quite versatile and helping in all situations. As such, this choice between picking these talents or Cyclone will be a difficult choice and a big change. You should lean into whichever ones help your composition out the most, whether you need extra defensives or if you want the ability to spam Cyclone. For instance, when playing with a mage, you'll want to take Cyclone for more control. However, if you play compositions like Kitty Cleave, then you may want Renewal instead. One big drawback of the talent tree is having to choose between Bash and Roar. Bash can be used to CC an enemy player to gain an offensive advantage or to be used as a peeling ability. Incapacitating Roar is also an excellent peeling tool that can be used against multiple players, stopping them in their tracks. In Shadowlands, you have access to both, but in Dragonflight, you'll need to choose between them. This will be a bit of a hindrance towards your ability to peel, picking whichever one suits your needs. Aside from that, all of your mobility and other cooldowns remain the same. This means that Feral Druid will most likely remain quite an elusive target that has a number of defensive cooldowns to help them survive well. However, they're still mostly prone to stuns paired with heavy burst damage, which some setups can do quite easily. Not all is looking hopeful, however. With the addition of Evokers, Cauterizing Flame will be a frustrating spell to deal with. This can be a soft counter to Ferals, as it can shut down a lot of your offensive pressure, removing the likes of Feral Frenzy on use. It means that when you face Evokers, you'll have to be wary when they have this ability so you can play around it. Moving along, there are also a number of minor changes that will affect Ferals moving into Dragonflight. The first thing is that Feral Druids lose Hibernate in the expansion. While this does sound like a big change, in reality this only really affects a few matchups. You could use it against Resto Shamans or Druids, trying to catch them off guard, putting them into a big CC if they aren't aware of it. You could even use it against Hunter Pets and other Feral Druids to peel them and stop them doing some damage. Most of the time it was mainly an annoyance to deal with for most classes rather than being 
super effective, which is why it's mainly a small change. In the Feral Talents, you're also forced to spec into Sudden Ambush so you can pick up other important talents. This is basically a gimped Shadowlands conduit which every Feral Druid would avoid using. Now that you have to spec it in order to pick up Lunar Inspiration and Feral Frenzy, well, it's impossible to ignore. Ideally, it would be nice to see something else replace it for a more meaningful talent that Feral Druids would appreciate. Looking on the bright side though, Ferals will be able to pick up Killer Instinct alongside Thick Hide. While this is only a small percentage increase in your survivability, it definitely adds up. Adding to your passive durability is a welcome sight for Ferals considering they're prone to dying in stun windows or during huge burst pressure. Finally, let's look back at a recap to all the main changes for Feral Druids. Moving into the expansion, your talents will mainly look something like this. Feral Druids will be adopting a Necrolord playstyle, focusing more on single target pressure. This is due to the crazy combination of Drought and Circle. The synergy of these talents will generate a bunch of extra pressure during any matchup and at any time. You still gain access to Feral Frenzy and Adaptive Swarm as well, helping to build pressure whenever you use them. The main attraction of this build is dropping Cyclone in order to pick up Heart of the Wild and Renewal. This will strengthen your ability to heal, giving you stronger heals and having a strong defensive cooldown. It will be difficult to decide between these two builds, which will vary in strength depending on the matchup. Swapping these talents could depend on your preferred playstyle or the synergy with the composition you play. You also have a third option to run the Convoke build, but it will be much weaker and less reliable than it is in Shadowlands. With a longer cooldown and without key damage modifiers, it might not be very impactful in Arena. Not only that, but you will lose out on the Circle and Drought combo, which will most likely be better. Overall, Feral is looking like it will deal an amazing amount of damage, which will be difficult for any team to deal with. If Feral can survive well and not be too squishy in Dragonflight, then it can be one of the best melee in the game. That covers everything on how Feral Druids will be looking like in Dragonflight. Make sure to consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of our new content. We'll be covering tons of content through Dragonflight, Classic Wrath, and Shadowlands during these months, so you know exactly what you're heading into. Hope you all enjoyed this guide on Feral Druids and Dragonflight. As always, take care, and thanks for watching.